video, I'm going to be showing you an extreme 3D over the top gardening design. It has a, um, a watering can that is up, built up off the nail. It has a pot that's got a couple little sprouts coming out of it. A row of carrots that really look like they are past ready to be picked. It's got a little gardening shovel and then it also has a couple seed packets. I love to have a vegetable garden every summer. It's something that I've had since I was her size and I've always participated in and so now she's got it where she's helping with making a garden and you know caring for it and planting seeds and I can't wait to see everything that we've grown. This is actually the first year we're ever doing carrots so fingers crossed. Usually we, we don't do carrots because the tops get eaten by bunnies and the plants die but maybe this year it'll be our carrot year for us. I hope you like this design as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So we're going to begin with a mixed bead of a few different shades of brown acrylic. I have three of them, a medium one, a really dark brown, and then one that has just a hint of glitter in it. And we're going to just be grabbing a multicolored bead of those three colors. The difference between them is subtle. So when you're applying them, it doesn't look like a very marbled mix. It just looks like it's not quite even, which is what we're going for. Apply that full layer, layer over the nail. And then before it's fully cured, so as it's starting to turn that kind of matte, we're going to dip a toothbrush. This isn't one you're gonna wanna put in your teeth. We're going to dip a toothbrush into one of the shades of brown acrylic powder and we're going to press that into that acrylic. It's going to add a beautiful texture to it and that bit of dry powder is going to give it that really legitimate dirt type look. Now we can start making all of our little pieces that we're going to be using. I'm going to make a terracotta pot so on a small straw I'm going to be just sculpting around it in a circle with a terracotta type of an orange color just going around and around and around in that circle. If you, I mean whatever acrylic pieces you want to make for this type of a design you can do it. You can personalize it. If you kind of like me, you're like, carrots, I'm not growing carrots. There's no use. Then don't sculpt carrots. You can do whatever, you know, whatever kind of things you like to grow. If you're a cabbage person, you can sculpt cabbage, asparagus, I mean, whatever. You can have fun with it. That's the best thing about these types of designs, in my opinion, is that you can personalize them to your own situation, your own scenario. And I also want to mention, because people ask me what I do with these nails after I'm done with them. Occasionally, I do bring this up. There are so many different things that you can do with them after you make them. For the first thing is, and some people are like, why do you make this on a nail? I'm a nail tech. Nail products are a big part of my life, and they are challenging to work with. So it, I mean, they really are. If you're using acrylic, and you're like, I don't know how on earth it's possible to do these things. It isn't like I just woke up one day and was able to do this. It's, they're challenging to work with. I love to be challenged. I love to do things that are difficult, especially in this kind of a situation. You make something that's small. You take two, three hours and you sit down and you try to do something, if it doesn't work, the only thing that you've wasted is two to three hours and what you've gained is knowledge on how to do it differently next time. So it's something that is really quick. If you try to make a sculpture out of say a certain type of clay and you're making a big sculpture, it would take significantly longer to add this level of detail to it because you're working on such a big scale. I love the quick element comparatively of working with nails. And then after you get done with them, you don't just have something that is gonna collect dust per se. Maybe it is, maybe it's just gonna sit on a shelf. And honestly, most of my nails do end up, nothing really happens with them. But any of them that you really like, that you really are just like, this is so cool, this nail could be made as a necklace pendant. I have a bunch of videos that I've done in the past showing how you can turn a nail into a necklace or a ring or a pair of earrings. And occasionally people have told me that that's weird. <laughs> I disagree. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm around nails for hours every single day of my life that I'm like, you know, it's not that weird. But this shape, while yes, it is a fingernail as far as it's a press-on plastic nail tip, it wouldn't have to be. It's just kind of a cool shape. It's got all these gardening tools. If you're a gardener and you want to wear something that represents things that you love, I don't see why this would be any different than any other charm bracelet or charm on a necklace pendant, however it is. So to answer several questions all in a row, there we go. And for anybody that has ever asked me why I don't sculpt things that are big, I do. I have. I haven't in a while. Like I said, time is kind of a big part of that. And as a mother of a almost four-year-old, time is not something that I have in excess. And so <laughs> I try to do things that are efficient and sculpting really cute, really cool little things with nail products is just the perfect balance of satisfying my artsy needs and being efficient and saving some time. So there we have it. Plus I like to, it's fun. So there we go. Now we're going to be sculpting. We, so we have a terracotta, uh, terracotta pot that's got some sprouts in it of whatever you want to pretend that they are. 
Uh, if it's me, those sprouts would be dead because apparently I can get plants to germinate and to sprout. And then as soon as they're past that, you know, surface of the dirt in a week, they're dead. It's just my cross to bear. I always do this every year. <laughs> I get a whole bunch of seeds and I plant them and I get them to sprout and then they die. And then I have to go buy a already established plant and plant it to get my fruits and veggies. And it's like a yearly, it's a, it's a ritual. It's just part of the process. So there we go. Some kind of almost soon to be dead sprout is in that terracotta pot. And then to do our watering can, I'm actually going to start it out with black acrylic instead of silver. Most of my silver acrylics, even the ones that are supposed to be smooth and metallic, they have a glittery texture to them. I didn't want that for a watering can, especially since to me, a proper watering can is kind of rusty, kind of dirty. It's not glittery. It's That's just not the way that that works. If you wanted it to be glittery, there is no harm in that. But to me, I just didn't want it glittery. So we've got the black cylinder that I sculpted around a nail form or a, sculpted around a straw. And then I'm going to set that on nail form backing to fill in the bottom. And then you have to sculpt all of the little pieces that go on the watering can. So there's the little part that is like a partial cover so that when you're pouring out of the can, it doesn't spill out over the top and get all over you. That's what I'm adding to the can portion of it now. It's going to press that half circle around it. If there's extra sticking off, you can gently file that away, but then you need the spout of the watering can and the handle. And then once you have all of those little pieces made and they're all hardened and cured and they're ready to be used, you can go through and you can use them and attach them and fill this guy out. If you are planning to have it start out black and then add the silver to it later, keep in mind that all of these pieces will get just ever so slightly thicker and bulkier once you apply some gel top coat and uh, the chrome powder and everything on top of it. So make them slightly skinnier, especially that handle. If it's really too thick to start with, it's just going to end up getting thicker and thicker. So you want to be careful and not let that happen. I'm going to now be gluing my pieces onto my watering can. I have the spout and then the little sprayer end on it. If you have a watering can there, it kind of like disperses the water into a bunch of drips instead of just one stream. So then after you have that part attached to go through and you're going to want to add another layer of that black acrylic over the top of those pieces that you just glued on. I know that I said don't, you know, don't make them too thick, but you also don't want them too thin and delicate and they definitely need to be secured to each other and to the can. So as you're making this, just go through, add a little bit of black acrylic, round things out, smooth them out and make them so much stronger in the process. And after you have that done, you're going to want to turn your can around and then you're going to glue the handle on it. So the handle is a C shape or a C type shape that you're going to glue from the top of the can up and around to the side. After that has been attached, just like you did for the spout of this watering can, we're going to be adding a little more black acrylic to it. If you are a gardener and a garden type person and you are just so excited by this little mini watering can, which I honestly think is about the cutest thing. I do have a video from a few years ago that is a the nails covered just with little daisies and then there's a watering can that is floating above the nail with a whole bunch of drips of water going over it which is a similar type of uh, this watering can itself is a similar type of design to it but it's just a, such a cute a different way of doing this and you could incorporate them together if you're going to do a set so I will put a link to that video in the description box below. So if this is your type of thing, I would definitely recommend checking for that one as well. So after we have this watering can all finished, it's all secured together, you're going to want to very carefully apply a layer of gel top coat over the entire thing. As you are applying this gel top coat, don't worry about doing the very bottom of the watering can because that will be attached to the nail and it won't be seen. So you don't have to do that. In fact, I would stick that down to some poster putty onto a little holder so that as you're doing this, you don't have to worry about holding the gel, the wet gel in any in any place and accidentally get it on your skin. So we're just going to carefully apply that over this whole thing. After that has been applied, go ahead and cure that. Once that is done, we're going to buff our, our chrome powder into the surface. I am using a piece of a makeup sponge and I'm using a small amount of powder. I don't want this to become overly chromied. Obviously I want it to have that silver chrome look to it. But like I said before, a watering can to me is something that is usually not perfect looking. So I don't want this to be too smooth and evenly chromed. If it does end up where it looks a little bit of patchy or a little bit patchy. I'm actually, I like that. So now I'm going to be using my silver acrylic and I'm going to be making a gardening trowel. So we're going to start out just with the front of it and you can, there's different shapes of these. You can make one that's a little bit less pointy, more of a rounded shape, more pointy and really sharp. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to make mine a little bit on the sharp side and I'm going to gently fold up one side of it just so that it kind of has a little bit of that triangular, that like 
uh, crease in the middle. And then for the handle, I'm just going to go in with a really pretty light blue, just a color that I feel like kind of goes with gardening. And when I think of gardening, I think of spending time outside in the sun and the blue skies. So I'm going to use that light blue color. And then with a piece of very fine wire, I'm going to gently bend it to kind of give it the shape of that handle. After I've got that little piece of wire bent, this is very fine, very flexible wire. So it should be pretty easy to bend. I'm going to grab the, the blade part of the trowel and I'm going to dip that into some nail glue, set it onto the end of my piece of wire. It is isn't going to want to hold very well because you're sticking something that's on an angle down to the wire but after it does grab a little bit I would secure that really quickly with some more of your silver acrylic just so it doesn't go anywhere after that's been done you can go ahead and attach that piece of the handle that blue element of the handle to the other end leaving a little bit of the silver this is just like the cushion part of the handle and there's usually some metal parts of it that kind of go from the end onto onto the go from one end to the other end after that's been attached down with the nail glue, flip that over and round out the handle with more of your blue acrylic. Just going over, covering up that extra bit of wire that's on the back side. And then if you need to add a little bit more of a roundness to the top, you can do that too. Once you're done with this and you are completely happy with the shape of your little trowel, you can go ahead and cut off the end of the wire because there's going to be that wire sticking out the side, which I'm currently using as a handle. So I won't get rid of it too soon because it does help. But there's going to be just a little circle of the wire that you can see. So you might want to cover that up with just a smidge more of your blue acrylic. Maybe not if it doesn't bother you. You could just leave it alone. Then we're going to be attaching these last couple pieces like the watering can. And after you have those two pieces that we just made attached to the watering can and the trowel, you can go through and you can do some of the detailing work on the rest of the stuff. At, at this point, they really don't necessarily need it. There's nothing on here that definitely needs outlining or needs detailing or any of that stuff. It's more of just whatever you want to add to it, you can. I'm going to add just a touch of detailing to the leaves that are sprouting out of that terracotta pot and then a little bit of an outline on the terracotta pot, the trowel, and then a little bit on the carrots, you know, really not too much. And then I'm going to be applying some gel top coat over the watering can. So it does look shiny, even though it's not as shiny as, as it, it could be, you know, it's an older, dirty watering can. And then we're going to be adding a little bit of a matte top coat over the different parts of the plants. And then if you want to, this is more of just a joke to myself, I'm going to be making a seed packet. So I've got some gel products, gel paint, and gel polish. I'm going to be making that on a silicone mat. So I'm just going to paint a square for the shape of the general seed packet, and draw a little carrot on there, write the word seeds on it, and then that's pretty much it. There's not a lot that I'm going to do to this, but like I said, it's a joke just because, as I mentioned a little bit ago, I can very easily plant seeds and then they die. So for me, seed packets are one of those things that honestly goes to waste every year. But then we're going to apply some top coat over that just to seal it up. After it's been cured fully, we can peel it off of the silicone mat, cut, cut the sides just to trim them really nice and straight, and then you can attach that anywhere you want on your little nail, and you've got a packet of seeds, you've got some growing carrots, you have a watering can, a trowel, a terracotta pot, everything you need to really get your garden started minus the just inherent gardening skills, which apparently you need that as well. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. And I, I hope it really kind of just feels like that first step of spring. Even if I'm not very good at it, I love to garden in the spring. It just makes you feel like you're, I don't know, getting out of winter, the winter blues. I hope you love it and I will see you all next time. Bye.